As a paleontologist with little interest in brains, it's just not something that I'm that into studying. I've talked about brains a lot in the past month, and there's two videos on the other parts, but here's another one that's just shown up in a new study, and it's looking at the brain of baryonychine spinosaurus. Now, that's not spinosaurus. The baryonychines are things like baryonics, but more than that, it's debated, frankly. It's kind of a, hey, they could be this separate group of spinosauroids, or they could actually be the kind of this grade, this kind of stepwise evolution into what would be the spinosaurids like spinosaurus. So we don't really know if they led directly into things like spinosaurus, or if they were kind of just next to them, kind of sister group to spinosaurus. But they can still help us understand a lot about how this specific group actually started to evolve their brains. And that's because some researchers took some of their skulls and ran them through a micro CT scanner. And what that does is it maps differences in density, meaning that where there's a gap where the brain would have been, it maps that absence of material, meaning that we can kind of map out what the shape of the brain would have been. And they found a few interesting things. The first of these is gonna be that the brain's pretty conservative. Even if you compare just the shape of something like Baryonyx's brain to the brain of Tyrannosaurus rex, you can see the general shape is still pretty similar. So they're not doing a lot to change the actual brain shape. This is despite the fact that Tyrannosaurus rex in some ways has a skull that's more similar to other theropod dinosaurs than Spinosaurus or Baryonyx do. Because the Spinosaurines, they actually kind of, you know, just lengthened their skull and that was probably really great for getting around certain waterways and grabbing fish and slippery prey, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what they were all doing. And the brain may help to help show some of this, and that's what these authors were trying to do. Now there are still some differences between these different brains, and one of them is the differences in size and the ratios of the midbrain to the medulla. And we can look at some of the very early theropods like Sinosaurus, and it's pretty close to one as far as that ratio is concerned. Then there's early branching theropods like the Abelosaurus, Majungasaurus, and Viavenator. And these ones you can see there's kind of the range there. And Ceratosuchops, one of the other Baryonychines that was studied, and Baryonyx, both show up pretty close to that kind of general trend that the Abelosaurs give. And then below that, you have some things like Allosaurus, which again, falls pretty close to that kind of ratio. So whatever Spinosaurus were doing, they weren't changing that much from these groups of kind of earlier branching theropod dinosaurs. Now, there are also the Solarosaurs, which includes things like Tyrannosaurus rex, but also smaller things like the Dromaeosaurs or Raptor dinosaurs. And you can see they actually shrink this ratio, and it's not known exactly why this happened, but it's something that's more specific to Solurosaurs. Again, Spinosaurs, and especially Baryonyx and Ceratosuchops, they pretty much seem to have followed what they were doing and what the other trends were in their general group of theropod dinosaurs at that time. They weren't really changing the brain in significant ways, at least not yet. There were previous studies done on the brain of Irritator, a more Spinosaurus-like Spinosaurid, and that one comes from Brazil, but it's able to help us understand how some of the changes occurred in the brain of Spinosaurids throughout time. For example, Irritator has a large flocculum, or flocular complex, and this is a part of the brain that helps integrate some of the muscle information, some of the ears information for the positioning of the head, and what information it's getting from the eyes and that way it can kind of help it track objects and be able to lock in on whatever it's looking at. And it seems like later on with things like Irritator, they, again, they had a larger one of these. It was more important for them to try and keep perfect track of whatever they were looking at. Meanwhile, things like Tyrannosaurus rex, Majungasaurus, they don't really need a large one of these because they're hunting relatively larger things probably. It's one of those things where if Tyrannosaurus rex is trying to hunt a hadrosaur, it doesn't need to keep perfect track of the exact center of its body because even if it misses the exact center of the body, it's still going to bite the hadrosaurus. It's, it's going to win that fight and be able to continue hunting later down the line. Meanwhile, when we're thinking about Spinosaurus, we're thinking they may have been hanging around the water and hunting fish or other small animals in the water meaning that they need to actually keep a pretty good track of where that thing is so that when they strike, they can make sure they're hitting it accurately. And this seems to be why Irritator had this enlarged flocculum. So again, these Baryonychines are being very conserved. They're probably pretty similar to the Abelosaurs as far as their ability to track things. But later on, Spinosaurids did develop the ability to better track things. And it's something that's not really, again, fully understood when this happened or why it happened, why it may have happened in different animals, or if it was kind of more stepwise progression, like I mentioned. 
but it is something that's interesting and that we can continue to investigate in the future. These researchers also looked at the hearing of the animal, and what they found is that hearing probably wasn't a major factor in what they were doing, but by measuring the different canals in the ears, they were able to suggest this is probably right around the pitch that they normally heard about. Now, they actually did this for a whole lot of animals, including Velociraptor, which was a pretty small dromaeosaur about the size of a turkey. And it probably would have been hearing pretty high-pitched noises. Meanwhile, we can look at Ceratosuchops and Baryonyx and see a kind of range from about 1400 hertz to about 1600 hertz, which then we compare to other large theropod dinosaurs and they're holding together pretty similarly. It's not like they're changing that much. Their hearing range was like other theropod dinosaurs. Meanwhile, Irritator, we can look at that and we can see that it was listening to a much higher pitch noise, or at least that's what its ears were accustomed or tuned to hearing. And there could have been a lot of reasons for this. Maybe they were going after smaller prey. I mean, that's a possibility. It could have also been something to try and tune out the flow of water around them if they were hunting in and around waterways, or maybe even just to hear one another. There's a lot of possibilities. We don't necessarily know why they changed to shift towards more higher pitch sounds in their listening but it seems like they did, at least based on our small sample size. They also looked at the semicircular canals in the ears, and the movement of fluid through these is what actually lets animals know what position their head is in. I mean, essentially, when you turn your head this way, it's because all of the fluid starts moving to one side of those canals, and so your head understands, hey, I'm turned sideways. And by looking at these, we can kind of estimate what the average head position would have been. And this is because essentially one of those normally wants to lay flat, and when it's laying flat, that means the head needs to be in a position where it is flat. So on things like pterosaurs, we can see that they're turned a little bit because they were potentially looking at the ground a little bit more. This is especially true in the S. darka pterosaurs. Even in Irritator, we can tell that it was mostly looking slightly downwards. And there's actually some muscular processes that are actually shifted in Irritator that would have helped it hold its head in that position. But Baryonyx and Ceratosuchops don't have those muscular attachments in the same places, and they also have a semicircular canal that would lay more flat when its head was relatively flat, meaning essentially just looking straight forward. So it's not like it was shifting its head that much or looking down as much. So the early Spinosaurids, or at least the Baryonychines, didn't really change their brain, and this may have potentially given them a little bit more of a kind of generalist feel, because even in Baryonyx, there is one fossil that has both fish fossils inside of it, but also some fragments of iguanodon bones. So they were potentially being a little bit more of kind of a mixed predator, feeding near the water and potentially further away from the water. Meanwhile, the adaptations we see in things like Irritator suggest, hey, maybe the Spinosaurines were much more attached to the water and more used to hunting things that were low along the ground and looking low at that ground in order to try and actually grab smaller prey and keep better track of it. All of this is just to say that Brains can be complex, and even though there's a lot of superficial similarities between things like Baryonyx and Spinosaurus, they probably didn't have the same kind of brain. They had brains that were slightly different from one another. And despite the differences between things like Baryonyx and the Abelosaurus, they had pretty similar brains. So there's not exactly a one immediate track that a brain is going to follow. But because of the general conservation of a brain, where they don't change a ton unless they absolutely need to, it seems like we need to try and understand brain evolution as being a bit slower than evolution of the physical rest of the body. Essentially, behaviors that are controlled by the brain aren't going to necessarily change quite as quickly as we might expect based on the physical changes that happen.